The major indoor lacrosse league scoring leader for the past two years has put on quite a show. And fans might second that emotion for his twin brother, Gary. In Buffalo, award-winning performances in the category of best player in a scoring role fill the stands. As well as stellar play in the supporting parts of the Emmys at stake here. But a shot at the North American Cup is. The playoff battle for the National Division Championship is next. Network presents the main today. Two teams as the Detroit Turbos take on the Buffalo Bandits. Hello, everyone. Craig Johnson joined by Lee Felsmo. It's the National Division Championship game. And these two teams are the elite in the offensive categories of the major indoor lacrosse league. Offensively, this is the championship right here. This is going to be an explosion. These teams stack up beautifully, as you talked about, in the stat column. But offensively, in the regular season, it's the Buffalo team, the expansion team, that has won every offensive category. And that is amazing. Let's take a look at the series record. Detroit won the first matchup in Buffalo, 23-17. They had a big game out of Paul Gate there. But in Detroit, it was Buffalo, 22, and Detroit, 9. They were stunned and embarrassed. The team comparisons, right there you can see that the Bandits have the advantage in the, all the offensive categories. Detroit owned those offensive categories for two years before Buffalo came on board. When you talk about the Detroit Turbos, 6-2 and two, their record. they got to buy into this divisional championship game. They're led, of course, by the big three. Well, this is the Bermuda Triangle of offense, and that's what the team from Buffalo is going to have to contend with. These guys scored, the last time they met up in Buffalo, 73% of the goals for Detroit. This is what they're going to have to look at to be successful. Buffalo will. 16 goals the first time they matched up, and that was a win for Detroit. The second game, they only got seven goals out of these three, Paul, Gary Gate, and Pete Park, they've got to raise the level of uh, play for those three guys, Craig. They have to score, I think, at least 10 goals for Detroit to win. Of course, Ted Sawicki in goal, always a key for the Turbos. This is a first-team All-Pro. He is a sensational player. Didn't have a great game last time here at Joe Louis Arena. He will be on uh, the test bench, as it were, in the first quarter. He has to be accurate. He has to be sharp in the first quarter to get his confidence up. Boston against Buffalo, 22-16. to Buffalo with a win to earn their way into this championship game. Buffalo with a record of 5-3, and three, but they're on a six-game winning streak. Well, this is an expansion team. They lost their first three games of this season, learning how to play in the major indoor lacrosse league. Since then, they have won every game by an average of 9.2 goals. They're led by Derek Keenan, and this guy can do it all. He can assist. He can score 49 total points. He is a focal point for the defense of Detroit. Kevin Alexander, the greatest player ever playing Canada, 35 years old. He's played in countless world games. He's in the Hall of Fame already in the box league in Canada. They brought him out to give experience to the team, and he gives more than experience, Craig. He had five goals in this arena last time they played. If you've ever been to a Buffalo Bandits game in person, you've heard Gary, well, the guy we're talking about, the goalkeeper for the Bandits. Well, he was a Coors Light MVP last time here at Joe Lewis. He'll have a lot of pressure on him because last time he had a lot of shots missed the goal from Detroit. But in this game, Detroit knows that they've got to hit the goal, pepper Geary early, and really go ahead and get ahead in the score. Throughout the season, it seems like the coaches have gone to leave to find out what the keys to the game are. Let's find out what they are in this one. Well, let's take a look at the focus for the Bandits. They have to hold the Gates Park combination to 10 goals or less to be in this game. They have to watch their slow starts. They only scored one goal in each of the first two first quarters of this year's matchup. And they have to stay on the penalty box. They led the league in penalties. That'll give Detroit an unfair advantage. For Detroit, their keys are to win the first quarter. They've got to get out to a good lead, a three-goal lead maybe in that first quarter and hold on to it. They've got to hit the goal. Last time they played this team here, they missed the goal 28 times more than they did the first time when they won. And seven non-gate, non-park goals. That means the rest of the roster, 
not Peter Park or Paul or Gary Gate has to score at least seven, in my estimation, for them to win. If you like low-scoring games, you've come to the wrong place. A high-scoring game probably coming up. It's the National Division Championship, and we will have the starting lineup and faceoff when we return to the Joe Lewis Arena. Tonight's Major Indoor Lacrosse League Game of the Week is brought to you by Coors Light. It's the right beer now. By U.S. Air. U.S. Air begins with you. By Reebok. Life is short. Play hard. By STX Lacrosse Equipment. And by General Motors. GM is putting quality on the road. Craig Johnson, Lee Belsmo, back with you at the Joe Lewis Arena for the National Division Championship between the Bandits and the Turbos. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for today's matchup. The matchups uh, go like this, the opening lineup. Buffalo, Keenan, Beltman, Alexander, Hall, Emick, and Gary will start. He was the Coors Light MVP here at Joe Lewis last time they played. Paul and Gary Gate, very tough to defend as a combination. Lemon, Lanty, Lee, and Sawicki in the goal. This is a tremendous offensive matchup. These ten guys constitute most of the goals for both of these teams. Ted Sawicki in goal for the Turbos. They sometimes call him the great one. Out of Brock University, 206 saves in his seven games. I'll tell you right now, he is nervous as we look down at Geary on the other end. Bill Geary was the, as we have mentioned, the Coors Light MVP last time here. It was Ted Sawicki who had the shaky game. Ted Sawicki right now is thinking Geary's got the confidence. He's got a six-game winning streak. Ted Sawicki, first-team All-Pro to the left of our screen for the purple-clad turbos. He's the one that's going to feel the pressure. Officials for today, Roy Condon, he's the referee, the chief official. Mike Ventura and Dave Berman will be the linesmen. Kevin Alexander against Gary Gate. The opening faceoff and the division championship is underway. Faceoff controlled by the Turbo. And I expect the Gates to come exploding out of this game and really add to the offense. Last time they were really shut down by the great matchups that the defense of Buffalo put against them. They're going to have to go ahead, step forward, and do the offensive chores for Detroit. Tom Emick will bring the ball up. This is Darius Kilgore. Being marked by Lancey behind the net. Sends it out front. Stolen away by Gary Gate. Turbos on the fast break. This is going to be a goal by Paul. Paul Gate digs, but deflected wide by Gary. Tremendous save. Almost 9 out of 10 accuracy on that one. You get a fast break with Gary and Paul. Very rarely do they lose it. Shot from the outside. Quick off the rebound, Brian Lemon, but Gary not going to let anything by. Well, he's starting off on fire. Tremendous saves. Two saves there. The Gates on the fast break. That is normally a goal, and that time Gary comes up big. Already made one save, and here again on the replay, Lemon puts one back in his face. Gary, tremendous save. Across the restraining line, Gate with a shot. Glove save by Gary again. Three big saves by Gary as the Gates apply pressure early. Mark Burnham will bring it up. Second year man out of Syracuse. Trying to get it over to Bill O'Hanlon. O'Hanlon didn't see it coming. Adam Mueller with the loose ball. There you are. If you did a computer score taking the average score and the average defense for each team, the game would end up like this. 16 point against 16 point and a small 5 100 victory to Detroit. All day picks up the loose ball away from Kevin Finneran. They'll wait for some reinforcements. We talk about this game being an offensive show, and I went ahead and went out on a limb by saying I think it'll be more like an 18-16 win, and I think it'll be tough to beat Detroit only because Buffalo beat them last time. I think the pressure is on Gary and Paul Gate to prove their worth. They are great players, but they've got to prove it against this Buffalo team. Holding the call away from the ball, but a penalty will be called, I believe, against Darius Kilgore. He had some words following... The holding call, and Kilgore will take a seat in the penalty box. There's a place he's 
pretty familiar with. Number one in the league, 13 penalties, 49 minutes. I was going to say, he sure is familiar with that spot in the penalty box. Here's the hit right in here. That's I think he's baseball season. So it'll be power play for Detroit. Off the loose ball. Very critical. We talked about one of the keys is for Buffalo not to get themselves in the situation. But Detroit has to capitalize on this man up. They've got to put it in the net. Gary Gate with a shot, but Gary won't let it by. Loose ball picked up by Mahar. Gary going against Ron Martinello. Dumps it behind him. Long pass down. Almost a one-on-one situation as Keenan was parked in front of the net. On the other side, here's Paul Gay. He loses control of the ball off the stick check by Bel- Beltman. Well, Detroit's not settling. Now they balance up. They've got five on four, so they want to go ahead and settle. They've got a minute 15 left on the penalty. This is a new extra man, Terry Martinello. Knee injury out. Terry Martinello, very accurate shooter, so they've rearranged this power play, and they're not quite probably as in sync as they were a week ago. Buffalo always dangerous on the shorthanded situations. This is Derek Keenan. Keenan takes the shot from the outside as Sawicki has to pull it out of his pass. We know Buffalo's going to start slow. They've done it all year. Again, one goal in the first quarter. Both times these two teams have met. It's really imperative that Detroit takes advantage of these shots. Beats Geary. Geary is looking very strong. 40 on the power play. Here's Paul Gate at the point. He fires. That one hit a player out front. Martinello reels it in. Still on the power play. 30 seconds left. A rocket shot off the pipe. That one in the corner. Penalty down to 20 seconds. They'll have at least one more good shot. There's Paul Gate. Martinello takes the shot. That one goes wide. 15 in the power play. 20 on the 30-second clock. Here's Paul Gate. The zone defense seems to be working here. Brian Martinello took the last shot. This time he looks for Nicola down low. And Brian was looking for the shot. Took his eye off for one moment. Quick one-touch shot by Martinello. Doesn't get by Geary. And both teams at full strength. A great redirect there by Ronnie. Just went behind the pipe. And now when he becomes a little bit of a liability, he's trying to get off the field right now. A new line on for Detroit. Amley to Veltman. Darius Kilgore's shot goes high. Whistle blows on the loose ball. Push. And the ball will belong to the Bandits. We're almost five minutes into the game, Craig, and we've seen a lot of good opportunities for Detroit. The big goal-stopping ability of Geary has taken away maybe potentially three goals. This is the kind of thing that can haunt Detroit. They've got to get the lead here in the first quarter. A withholding call has given the ball back to the Turbos. They seem to be shooting a lot from the outside on Geary. They've got a couple great penetrating players. Park right now normally is down low. Peter Park tried to get it to John Hamilton for the redirect. It didn't out of trouble and does. Somebody's stick is broken in half. Family without the stick. And Rodriguez, a uh, couple socks to the head. Now, the last game here in Detroit between these two teams, the first quarter ended in a one-to-one score. Very low scoring, and again, that was pretty much a victory for this team from Buffalo. If they can keep it close, they are a team that gathers momentum. Seven shots on goalie Geary. He has been incredible in the goal. Seven big saves early on, and that is the difficulty with not getting the goals when you have the chance. Now Buffalo puts in the first one of the game. Sawicki sees one go by him. John Tavares with the first goal of this game. Tavares scores. He's a sensational player. They can do it on both ends of the field. He's great on ground balls. It was the opportunity lost for the Detroit Turbos, but Tavares gets goal number one. Now we have nothing on the clock. Let's take a look. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back with more. one nothing in favor of the Bandits. As we return you to the Joe Lewis Arena, official scoring on goal number one, Bill Mahar credited with the goal by the official scorers, John Tavares with the assist. Tavares gets that assist, and he has 21 goals, 22 assists coming in. He is a very balanced player, and those are the kind of guys that scare you. Keenan, very balanced. Tavares, very balanced. Beltman, a vacuum cleaner for ground balls. They have great depth on the Buffalo squad, and Detroit right now one goal down and opportunities lost. That's the story six minutes into the first quarter. Ryan Hall brings it down, looking for the centering pass, takes the shot and scores! He had everyone fooled! 
Hall with a tremendous look away. He looks across the cylinder. He gets the wiki to lose his attention momentarily. And then after looking across, look at him looking across the cylinder. He's looking to feed all the way. He fakes the feed and then pops between the legs. Looks away, looks away, and right there bounces between the old five hole, as the goalies call it. Again, Hall gives all his attention to the cylinder. He makes goalie Suwiki nervous because he's looking to the cylinder. Suwiki has to be thinking of going that way. And then Brian Hall in the last moment, since nobody played defense on him, shoots the ball. Kilgore wins the faceoff, trying to get it up to Tavares. Suwiki reels it in. Outlet pass to Kevin Finneran. The centering pass to Mueller goes through, but it's picked up by Martinello. Finneran doesn't get the ball into the stick, but Nicola able to pick up the loose ball. Nicola against Tavares. Tavares with a stick check. Ball is loose. Tavares takes him down, and that'll either be a hold or a two-minute penalty. Well, I think when you bring him down to the carpet, that's going to be two minutes in the box, and Tavares is going that way right now. You can't bring him down. Look, there's the tackle. Once you get your stick in there, you're off, stick, hand, and then... No question about that. He just literally brings the player down. Nikola, very strong, trying to break free and come in on Gary. And Tavares elected to take him out of the play. Now, I'm not so sure that's very smart because now you give Nikola and the power play another shot at Gary. He has stood the test so far. But here's the second power play of the game and oh so critical for Detroit to get one by Gary. Get by get again. Back up to the point to Paul. Over to Martinello at the wing. His shot hits the pipe. Ronnie Martinell from Maryland, a tremendous shooter. The pipe again stops him. And Paul Gates shot from the outside. Bounces off the foot of Gary and to the back of the net. Power play goal. Again, Tavares, maybe not being as smart as he could have been. 2-0 lead, and Tavares goes to the penalty box to give Detroit this opportunity. Paul Gates looks across to Gary, pulls the ball back, and just blazes it through right between the legs, very much like Hall's goal on the other end. Two to one now, Detroit feeling more comfortable. These two guys, I talked to Paul Gate, number 19, for the game. I talked about, I said, you haven't been an underdog very many times in your career. He said, what underdog? Are we underdogs? He doesn't really understand that they were shellacked last time here in Joe Lewis by this great Buffalo team. These guys are confident players, the Gate brothers. Wild Shirley shot goes into the pads of Bill Gary, and I think we're going to see another penalty called. This one may go against the Bandits. The Bandits team players seem to be arguing the point. They're going to stick Tavares back in there now. Tavares is matched up with that tough defensive matchup scheme by the brain trust of Buffalo. And they just would, I guess, rather have them go power play than give them an open shot. But it seems like they're really digging that hole, that penalty situation, giving the advantage to Detroit. Well, Tavares goes back into the penalty box just after coming out. Called for hooking. Easy shot by Ronnie Martinello. He was stopped the last two times. Last time he had one off the pipe. This time he walks in and just lazy bounce shot. Buffalo killing themselves by spending time in the box. Now watch him walk in. Nobody plays defense. Bounce shot. He had a little bit of a screen. And boy, did he pinpoint the corner. Again, the goalie's coming out to him. He'll get the ball. The goalie starts advancing toward Ronnie. Watch the goalie Gary come out. He comes out a little bit, setting way too high. He sees the white spot. 2-2 two -two game. You hear so much about the Gates and Peter Park, Ron Martinello, a very important part of this team. Well, oh, he still holds a lot of offensive records for Detroit. He's been probably, over the history of the franchise, one of the most consistent offensive performers. Hilts with a pass to Bissell to the back of the net. Textbook fast break. And they came flying out of that faceoff. Let me see if it was Kilgore. See, when Kilgore faces off, they have an explosive face-off situation because he can get the fast break going. He has a fast break draw. So this time, rather than have Alexander clamp and control, they put in a fast break man for the, for the uh, face-off, and Kilgore sets it up two passes away right behind the goal. Watch this. Ball comes out, knocked loose, picked up on the fast break, and that's what started it right there. 3-2. These two teams are really, after a slow start, Craig, opening up the offense. Holding the call. The ball will go to the Turbos. No, they'll reverse the call. It'll go to Buffalo. Meridian sets it up. Over to Bob Hamley. Hamley, stick check away. Dan Pratt going after the ball. Picked up by Bill O'Hanlon, but the body check takes it away from him. Fight along the boards. 
Loose ball picked up by Armando Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Some shuck and a jive in there, but comes away with the ball. 20 on the shot clock. Well, he's a nifty little player. He's got some big goals in his history of play here for Detroit. And he can come up with them when you need them. He's one of those guys we talked about that half the score, one of the roster players that half the score. Shots on goals. You look at that Detroit out shooting by far the Buffalo Bandits. The Buffalo putting it on the numbers when it counts. They have gotten the most efficiency out of their shooting. Rodriguez shot, saved by Bill Geary. Seven minutes to go here at the Joe Louis Arena. 3 2. The Bandits with the lead, the lead in this divisional championship game. Greg, when you talk about strength of both teams, Detroit loses an advantage when you talk about team speed. And the last two goals for Buffalo have been fast break goals. That last shot by Keenan was broken up by Brock Veltman to haul the shot. But that's a 30 second violation. Coaches hate it. You've got 30 seconds to put a shot on the goal. And they made one pass too many. Lost the chance. Some excellent defense there by the Turbos. And on the other side, Ryan Lemon puts it to the back of the net to tie this one at three. A Canadian combination here. When Gary Gate gets the ball, he really gets the attention of the goalie. But what makes Gary and Paul so deadly is that they can pass the ball with tremendous accuracy. Ryan Lemon was parked down for the right-handed shot. It was Gary Gate who had the ball up to the goalie's left. He got all the attention. He rifles it down to Brian. He just redirects it past Geary, and that ties the game again. Brian Lemon with his seventh goal on the year. And Alexander against Gary Gate on the faceoff. Loose ball picked up by Veltman, your favorite vacuum cleaner. Well, ground balls are so critical to the sport of lacrosse. It gives you the possession, of course. You need the possession to get the shots. And you need those shots to get the goals, so it all falls in line. Tom Emick around the pick by Keenan gives the ball to Darren Keenan. Keenan against Paul Gates. Stick check takes it away. Whistle on the hold away from the ball. We'll give the ball back to the Buffalo Bandits. I think the check by Paul was a little bit of a wraparound. He had the off. Watch his offhand right there, number 19. He comes around the sick check very quick, and then the backhand caught him last time, and they didn't get the ball. Emick tried to redirect the ball. Ball redirected to Pat Lee. Paul Gate going in. Couldn't pick the ball up off the turf. Push and call on Paul Gate. Now, Craig, he had a fast break. He's totally exhausted from playing defense, and he wanted that fast break desperately. Emick whistled for the push on Paul Gate right in front of the net. Gary Gate was there, but Gary reels it in, sends it long, looking for Kevin Alexander, but it'll go right into the net. Well, we just saw the replay of the push on Paul Gate on that fast break. He was totally exhausted, could not catch up with the ball. Here's Fennerin. Nicola. I think there's a new, a new acquisition, Craig, this year. Oh. Once again, Ron Martinello with the score, number two on the afternoon. First one for Ronnie was a power play goal. This time he gets a nice assist from Brian Nicola. I started to tell you how Nicola right here, number 10, was a new acquisition. Canadian player comes in, look at him, he takes three players, and then all alone, Ronnie Martinello. Nicola is so strong, watch him get three players. One player there, two players slides up right there, and then the third player comes up, leaving Ronnie Martinello all alone. Martinello, he is so smart as a shooter, comes in, waits for Gary to give him a shot, give him a little bit of white net to shoot for, and Ronnie hits it two goals today. Boy, they need that big time. Ronnie Martinello to step forward and get some goals. Ron Martinello, who went to school at the University of Maryland, although he's a native of Windsor. Or Ontario. Tavares will run the show. Tavares going in, taken down by Adam Mueller on the counterattack. Here comes Brian Nicola. Nicola has Spinner in as an outlet man. He also has Paul Gates. Excuse me, that's Adam Mueller. He couldn't catch up to the ball, but the loose ball push will give the ball to the Turbos. Here's Sebastian, way outside, to Nicola. Nicola moving in, looking for the shot, took the shot, but couldn't get off a good one. Gary reels the ball in, almost put it into his own net. Well, Brian's attracting three defenders again. If he goes ahead and gives the ball up like he did to Ronnie Martinello last time, he's going to end up with a lot of assists, and his team will get a lot of goals. That time, he went through the defense, got the attention of three defenders again, but didn't give up the ball. Kevin Alexander to run the show from the wing to Mike Meradian. 
against Sebastian. In front, he tried to get the ball to Burnham. Hamilton with a loose ball. Here's Adam Mueller. Mueller looking behind him, wants to slow down and wait for some of the other turbos to join him on the line change. Well, he's tired. He made a lunging defensive check to get that ball back to Detroit. One goal lead. They've got to feel good. They blew the early opportunities, but they've got it together now. Right in front, Peter Park with a point blank shot. Went wide to the right side, gets his own rebound. He's Bump. dangerous right here, Craig. Tried to put it in front for Hamilton. Crease violation is the call. Pete Park, 6'5", 220, and that's where he wants to get the ball. He was reluctant to pass down there because when he has possession down that low, Buffalo incidentally trying to cut him off of the ball. When he has possession that low, he wants to walk around, use that body to force himself into a good range for shooting. Here's Kevin Alexander at the center circle. Alexander against Dan Pratt. Goes around the pick, set by Hall. Behind the back pass to Hall, but right into the stick of tits a week. Well, I think Hall wasn't ready for it. Alexander saw that. Hall didn't. He really wasn't ready for that ball because he could have caught it had he known it was coming. Sensational eyes from the veteran Kevin Alexander. Gary Gay taking the shot. Paul Gay tried to follow up. Lemon with a bounce shot. Save Gary. Two tremendous saves by Gary. Here's Brian Hall on the fast break. Tried to take it low. Sawicki with a save. The Pat, push from behind yeah. by Pat Lee. Well, Pat Lee came in. You're absolutely right. And that's what you don't care. I mean, that's a good call by Pat Lee to get his defense time to come down and regroup. Brian Hall's second shot. Reeled in by the great one. Here we go. Fast break coming down. Tremendous save by Sawicki. Now the ball's loose. And when that ball comes near the stick of a Buffalo player, that's when Pat Lee levels them. Here's Paul Gate. One-handed pass. Gary Gate. This is where he is dangerous. Going against Beltman. His shot deflected over the glass by Gary. Ball will go back to the turbos. On the restart, this is Kevin Finneran. Acquisition from the Blazers last year. A real good player, a good setup player. He'll do all the dirty work for you if he's got tremendous skills. He can score. Paul Gay has a stick check courtesy of Keenan. Pass from the outside, almost became a shot. Gary trying to redirect the ball to clear it out. Hall has the ball knocked away from him. Gary pulls it in. Here's a fast break opportunity. Now you've got a real tired Detroit defense. Buffalo, they'll take their time, switch the line, and come in. They know this is a tired defensive line and try to take advantage of it. This is Darius Kilgore. Kilgore fires that one high. And Craig, that's a good example of a tired defense. Let's see if they have enough wheels for the fast break. Mueller trying to send it long for Finneran. Gary will pull it in. Nobody got in front of that shot by Buffalo last time. The shot was way high, but nobody got in front of Kilgore, so he kept walking in, finally took the rocket shot from outside. 105 to go in the quarter. 4-3. Turbos with a lead. Bandits trying to stuff it in there. Jerry Hiltz taking the shot. Here's Mahar. Mahar spins, looking for the shot, takes it, saves Sawicki. Sawicki has to loop it into the air before holding on to it. On the fast break, here's Nikola. He's got Gary Gate to his right, but he looks like he'll take the shot himself and does. Loose ball in front. Here we go on the counterattack. Here is Kilgore. Met at midfield by Armando Rodriguez. Kilgore bringing it down. Takes the shot to save by Sawicki. But Rodriguez rolled him all the way down there. Well, he, he gets riding time. About 30 seconds on that. But he also gets two minutes in the box. Kilgore, big and strong. He was carrying him all the way down the field. Let's take a look. Kilgore, big, strong. Look at this. Breaks through the defense. Now Rodriguez says, I'm not going to let you go. Hammers him at the end there. But he had just gotten rid of the ride of Rodriguez. That'll give him two minutes in the box. First power play opportunity for Buffalo, and it couldn't come in at a better time. 24 seconds left in quarter number one. Keenan, Hamley, Darius Kilgore, Kevin Alexander, and John Tavares, the power play unit for the Bandits. And the first servo goes without harm to the turbo. And a little bit of a fight down the corner. Teddy Sawicki being very smart, taking his time before he just dumps it into the corner. Gary 
Sends it to midfield. Kilgore takes the shot at the last moment. Little scuffle at the end of the quarter, but we have played one quarter at the Joe Lewis Arena. The Detroit Turbos with a one-goal lead in the National Division Championship. You're watching it on Brian Network. We are ready for the second quarter of play. But first, the first quarter stats, Lee. Well, the first quarter really goes well for Detroit at the end. Let's take a look at the numbers, though. Detroit, total shots 25 to 12. They way out shoot them on goal 70 to 10. Big advantage there. Faceoffs about even. Ground balls about even. The big number advantage, of course, in the shots. So the Bandits play tremendous defense, but Detroit really putting on the pressure. And the numbers that don't show up there that are more important to me. Craig, are that the top four scores for Buffalo, guys like Keenan, Tavares, Kilgore, all of them have 20 plus goals coming into this game, did not score at all. And Tavares tries to get a shot off early. Remember, the Bandits on the power play as we begin quarter number two. Here's Paul Gate, shorthanded situation. Gary Gate had it taken away by Tavares on the stick check. Hamley picks up the loose ball. The outlet pass to Keenan, and we'll see a delayed penalty here in a moment. Penalty. The goalkeeper has been pulled, sixth attacker out, but he won't get a chance to go on to the field. And Craig, penalty's a big part of this game. We've talked about it a little bit. Let's watch Tavares as he gets leveled here. All comes down. Tavares behind the boards and whack right there by Gary Gate. Gary Gate normally never losing his temper. Tavares takes a dive there. Emmy Award, Oscar Award winning performance. And that will give Gary Gate two minutes on the box. So it will be a super power play opportunity for 44 seconds. Kilgore, Hamley, Keenan, Tavares, and Alexander out there. Tough position to put Sawicki in. He played a pretty strong first quarter. And now you have given him a chance to go five on three. Very unlike Gary Gate to show any motion at all, much less an elbow to the head. A break for the Turbos as the ball bounced into the penalty box. So now a three on five offense. This is Hamilton, Paul Gate, and Peter Park, the unit out there. Loose ball picked up by Tavares. Obviously, you just like kill time. Park's out there because of his size. It's just three guys trying to pick up some space and shooting alleys against the five. Keenan looking for the shot, takes it to the back of the net. We're tied at four. Well, Keenan's the leading scorer, and to Detroit's credit, he didn't score at all in the first quarter. And now with a power play situation, he goes ahead and notches his first goal of the day. Just cranks it from well out in front. Not much Teddy can do there. He got the velocities. He brings it down again. Nobody picks him up. It's five against a triangle three. He walks into finally Park feigns like he's going to play defense. Look how far Sawicki has to play out of the goal to cut that angle. Good, accurate shooting. 27 goals this season. Keenan with six goals and five assists in the previous two games against the Turbos. He'll bring the ball down. Still on the penalty are the Turbos. It's a five-on-four situation now. Here's Hamley out front. Hamley moves it and takes the shot and scores! It's 5-4, Bandits, and what a difference a couple of power plays make. Well, Lyle Shirley and Dan Pratt had a shot at him. The Cardinals sit here is watch Pratt 17 and Shirley. They miss him. They check him, but they don't take him out of the play. Then he comes into that vacuum in the middle. He's inside the box, and he just beats Sawicki. There, two checks. Both of them miss the body. They come inside that vacuum right in the cylinder and beat Sawicki. 5-4, to four, Buffalo on top. Five straight goals. You see it in black and white there. And I thought one of the great things about Detroit's first quarter is that the three Buffalo goals, none of the big four for, Bu for Buffalo had scored. Well, since then, three of them have. Alexander, Tavares, and Keenan. Three of the five goals scored in quarter number two. Illegal procedure off the faceoff. Gives the ball to the Bandits. 
9.39 clock roll, excuse me, 8.39 clock rolling. Here is Burnham with 15 on the 30. Buffalo's not the kind of team you want to play catch-up ball against. Detroit really has to be a lot smarter and nail those offensive opportunities. They're not going to get that many. You can guarantee yourself you won't get more than Buffalo, probably less. Peter Park against Mike Meridian. Park looking to power his way in there. He can at six foot five, over 200 pounds. Looking for the backhanded shot. Can't get anything away. He'll give it to Paul Brock. His shot deflected wide by Geary. Paul Day going after the loose ball. Hamilton will pick it up. He takes the shot and hits the post. New 32nd clock for the Turbos. Well, that pipe has saved Geary, I think, three times. Brock will run the show now for the Turbos. Over to Hamilton against Bill O'Hanlon. Gets the pick from Rodriguez. Gary parries it over the bar. Peter Park pinned against the board. That'll be a two-minute penalty. They had him held right up in the face. And now a delayed call. Get a shot off, Park, is what they're yelling at him. A delayed call. Two minutes will be against Buffalo after they lose possession. Sixth attacker is on for the Turbos. Twelve on the shot clock. Nicola takes the shot. Six on the shot clock. They may get one opportunity with a sixth attacker. Ron Martinello with a shot from the outside. 30-second violation, but the ball will go back to the Turbos. Park totally exhausted. This team is being plagued by shooting inaccuracy. Last time they played here, they missed the goal 28 times more than they did when they won. We talked about that in the pregame. You saw them miss the goal two times right there. They've got to start sticking those opportunities. They get one here, five on four. Hamley called for the roughing penalty with 7.07 to go. That'll give Detroit the power play opportunity. Paul Gate will run it. Pass over to Gary Gate, who has to catch up to it. Here's Peter Park. Right in front for Martinello. The shot and the score around Gary. He wrapped it. Well, Ronnie Martinello's becoming a force. Somebody had to step up there be, be, uh, beside the Bermuda Triangle of uh, Gates and the Park boys. But here it is. Ronnie Martinello, coach's son, gets it down low. Nobody playing defense against him. He steps into the cylinder to get more white to shoot at and does a beautiful job. Watch. Ball comes in. Take one step to the cylinder. Look. Find your target. And he is a marksman. When he sees that accurate, that target, rather, he's very accurate. Ronnie Martinello, great player for Maryland. Three goals today. He's keeping his team in this game. That is their third power play goal in four opportunities, Craig. So they are very, very efficient when they get the chance on the power play. Right now, the difference in the game is that they gave Buffalo that same opportunity, and Buffalo capitalized as well. Tom Emick off the faceoff has a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. So Wiki with a pad save. Hall tries to pick up the loose ball. Gary Gate got a stick on it, but Hall gets it. But just for a moment, the holding call will give the ball to the Bandits. You know, a three-goal lead in this league is not that much. Four goals, you start thinking you're behind. But three goals, Detroit feels a little more comfortable. Kevin Alexander to run the show against Gary Gate, the teacher and the student there. This is Keenan. Gets it out front for Emick. Tied up in front is... Brian Hall on the counterattack. Gary Gate, Pat Lee can't control it. It's loose in front of the crease. Hall Gate comes up with it. Pat Lee takes the point blank shot. Gary with a save. Whistle blows. Crease violation will take it the other way. Great opportunity for Detroit. Gary Gate probably wishes he had it back now because Pat Lee couldn't handle it. The ball came down. This was after the fast break. Pat Lee finally gets it back. But Pat Lee had the shot off the fast break on the feed from Gary Gate. He just didn't handle the ball. Then it got pushed around the field. Veltman here, a little shot in there. <laughs> oh, the Paul Gate. Paul Gate saying, fine and dandy. Tough to hurt those Gate brothers. About 6'2", 200, very strong. Here's Darius Kilgore. Lancey gets it away from him. Here comes Dan Pratt on the fast break for the Turbos. Over to Gary Gate. The shot goes wide. Pat Lee with a follow-up. Once again, Gary with a save. Well, Gary Gate missed the shot again. 
Detroit missing those opportunities. You know, these Gate brothers, two years in the league now, two years out of Syracuse, maybe not in the crack shape they were when they came out of college, and not quite as accurate on those shots. Ball loose up front. Bissell couldn't poke it through. Sawicki on the outlet pass. Bounces it off the glass. Finneran trying to catch up to it, and that'll be a loose ball hole. Called against Darius Kilgore. Not a bad call. Gives Buffalo a chance to get some fresh legs on there for their defense. Now it's all settled for the defense or for the uh, offensive set of Detroit. Finneran up top. Ron Martinello going for number four. But Gary gets the stick on it. Tavares looking long. Goes right in front of the Bandits bench with it. Bob Hamley. Meridian. Dumps it over to Hamley. His shot stopped by Sawicki. Looking for the long pass, as he always does. Gets it to Nicola. It's a two-on-three situation. But Nicola's going to take it in. And score! Well, that's what made Brian Nicola one of the leading scorers two years ago in Pittsburgh. He has a tremendous, powerful rush on the fast break. A little bit of a fight going on at midfield. We look at the fans here. But Brian Nicola, when he gets it open, watch the explosion once he looks to the inside. Brian will come up. He'll settle his defender by looking to the middle and then explodes past him, pulls the stick at the last moment and drops it in behind the goalie. Sweet shot by Brian Nicola. A two-goal lead by the Bandits. Can the Turbos bring it back? We'll find out on Prime Network. Bandits are a man down. This is Derek Keenan at the point. Keenan has it six checked away by Dan Pratt. And a penalty will be called on John Hamilton for excessively rough play in front. Well, Hamilton just leveled Tavares right in front of the crease, and he throws a stick into the penalty box, really killing his team again. They've got a great chance here to get back on top. They had a major penalty to finish out the second quarter. Mino Martinello's team, though, not being smart. They keep killing themselves with stupid penalties, and now they are even up four against four. Take that back. They've only got three guys out there. Now four. Four on four. So they've taken away their opportunity for advantage, uh, one man advantage for at least the next two minutes. 2.51 to go in the first half. 9-7. The Bandits with the lead in this National Division Championship game. Stick check out front. Dan Pratt gets it away. Sebastian takes it back to Sawicki. Sawicki will bring it up. Very smart idea by Teddy. Comes up, getting closer to the feed as the lines are changing. 15 on the 30. Nicola, red hot, scored the last two goals for Detroit. Here's Nicola. Yeah, he didn't want to out give it up. Front. Oh, it hit the post. Feltman. Real? With a fast break opportunity to the trailer, Keenan, who can't get the stick on it. Keenan will finally pick it up. No, he won't. Push from behind. That will give the ball back to the Bandits. Greg Johnson, Lee Belsmo with you from the Joe Louis Arena. 9-7, 1.49 to go. It's a four-on-four -four situation. Sawicki pulling it in. When Nick goes tired on this line, he'll go off. And they'll put new people on. The Gate Brothers will now try to get a goal. 135 left, quarter two. Paul Gate. Half of the twin turbos. Moving in. Takes the shot. Gary with a save. Gate with his own rebound. Out front to Peter Park. Pad save. Gary as he deflects it wide. Park going after the rebound. Gets it. Paul Gate trying to get to the ball. Reeled in by Gary Gate. Gary Gate to Paul Gate. To the post. They've had six pipe shots. Gary is really being helped by the shooting of Detroit, which is very fine and accurately going for those perimeters, and they're hitting the pipe with regularity. Detroit about to go on the power play in about four seconds. Clock rolling down in the first half. Greg, if they just get half of those pipe shots to hit the white net, you've got three more goals. Hilt's being double-teamed, but slows down and sets up the play. 
Ten seconds remaining on the shot clock. 37 in the quarter. Alexander to Veltman. Five on the shot clock. Alexander takes the shot, but it's stopped out front. People losing equipment right in front of the net. 25 to go in the quarter. Ball game to Gary. No, excuse me, Nicola. Nicola couldn't control the ball. It's loose. All trying to pick it up, but Paul Gate gets to it. You only got 10 seconds to get the shot off. He takes the shot from the outside. It's wide. Day will send the ball to midfield, and that will probably do it for the half, unless Martinello gets a miracle shot. He does not, and the Turbos will go into the locker room down by two at halftime. But if you're looking at it from a bandage perspective, Buffalo goes into the locker room with a two-goal lead. First quarter was Detroit's. Second quarter was Buffalo's. They took advantage of those power plays early on, scored five straight goals, and they really turned away a good opportunity by Detroit late in the second quarter. They are in control going into half number two. We're getting ready for halftime. The Coors Light halftime report coming up when we return. 9-7 Bandits on Prime Network. Time for the Coors Light Halftime Report. The Buffalo Bandits with a lead at halftime. 9-7 to seven the score here at the Joe Louis Arena. Craig Johnson and Lee Velsmo back with you. And let's take a look back into 1992 and take a look at some of the league leaders. Well, it's been a sensational year, especially for Buffalo. Seven of the top eight scorers in this league are playing in today's game. Let's take a look at the people who scored the most points in the major indoor lacrosse league. Paul Gate led again with 53 points. He is a scoring dynamo, followed by Gary Gate, his brother, identical twin, Derek Keenan, John Tavares, and Darius Kilgore. All three of the last five from Buffalo. So Buffalo and Detroit representing the top five point leaders. Let's take a look at Paul Gate in action. Tremendous left-hand shooter. He can go around the back, which gives him effectively a right-hand shot. But this guy can really dominate the offensive end of the field, and he has done it for the first two years that he's been in the major indoor lacrosse league. 53 points, 33-20 for a 7.6 point per game average. 33 goals, good enough to put him in the league in the goal department, too. There again, up front, followed by Gary, and you see a lot of the same names. Keenan Park this time, Darius Kilgore in there, and Jeff Jackson from Baltimore creeps into the top six in goal leaders. Let's take a look at Paul Gate scoring now, 33 goals on the season, a feared shooter, and here he is against Buffalo, coming in again left-handed. Makes the big juke move, shooting from the outside. These two shots were from outside, but believe me, nobody goes right down to shoot better than Paul Gate and his brother Gary. 4.7 per game average. Now assists, and we see a lot of different names. Buffalo rises to the top, and this, of course, Greg, has been their success all year long. Keenan and Veltman tied at 23, and let's watch them. Kilgore will score here. He'll give it to Keenan on the fast break. That's Rich Kilgore. Keenan gets it right back to him, and this is where they get the assist. The ball bounces around. He picks it up, loops it over to Sawicki. But nobody can assist like this team from Buffalo. Again, Kilgore comes in. The assist from Keenan. There, Keenan can not only score, but he can assist with the best of them. Save percentage Tom Manos had the year of his life. 84.7% save percentage this year, followed by Kevin Bilger in second place. And let's take a look at Manos in action. Makes the big save here for the Baltimore Thunder. Talk is he'll retire this year, the great player out of Towson State. We'll be back with more of the Coors Light Halftime Report in a moment. Back on the Coors Light Halftime Report as we take a look back at the first half action. 9-7 to seven the score. Buffalo with a two-goal lead. And now we pick up the scoring. This is in the second quarter. The eighth goal of the game. It was five straight goals for Buffalo. This was the eighth one to make it 8-4. It was Hamley scoring his second goal of the game for Buffalo. Then the answer to that was by Ronnie Martinello scoring his third goal of the game. He scored two in the first quarter when they had the 4-3 advantage. And now... To stop that onslaught from Buffalo, Ronnie Martinello steps up, scores goal number five. The other big offensive star in the first half was Brian Mikula. He gets two goals at the end of the first half on fast breaks like this. He'll come down with his patented move, fake to the inside of the cylinder, and then get it right behind Geary. Tremendous first half for Brian Mikula. Take a look at some of the first half numbers. 
Took oh. quite a story on the Buffalo side. Well, great total shots by Detroit way out in front. And the sad part is they are not in front. They outshot them 47 to 28. Shots on goal 30 to 24. You can see their shots on goal way behind Buffalo's. The other stats relatively even. But the big story there, Detroit not shooting that accurately. The, uh, the Bandits taking advantage of all their opportunities. Take a look at some of the leaders in half number one. Tavares, Kilgore, names we expect to see in Keenan. Hamley, the big story here. Two goals, one assist for the Bandits in the first half. For the Turbos, Ron Martinello leading the way. Paul and Gary Gate not scoring as much as they usually do. Well, Martinello, a big surprise. He has a history of, a good, of being a good scorer, but he hasn't been this year the one that they ride the back of. Nicola coming in, so five goals from them, those two. Where are the Gate brothers and Park? We talked about how important they were to the success of uh, Detroit. One goal so far, and that is way off the pace that Detroit is going to need to win this game. Today's game brought to you in part by the Radisson Hotel Poncho Train, the official headquarters of the Major Indoor Lacrosse League in Detroit. We'll be back with the second half on Prime Network. I'm Rick Stowe of the Baltimore Thunder, and I'm going to score a bunch of goals tonight. We'll see about that, and you can see it on the Mill Home video. This exciting video is full of the greatest action from the Major Indoor Lacrosse League. To order, send a cashier's check or money order for $9.95. That's right, only $9.95 plus $3 postage and handling. To Mill Home Video, 9200 Ward Parkway, Suite 500, Kansas City, Missouri, 64114. Please allow four to six weeks for delivery. We are ready for the second half as the officials make their way to midfield. And this half will begin with a Detroit power play. Mito Martinello directing the troops. Well, he's got some directing to do. He's down by two. The last two years, he has been the favorite team. He's had a team that has had an explosive offense and has won two major indoor lacrosse league championships. And at midfield, uh, as you take a look at Bill Gary, there is a discussion going on with Bob Hamley, along with one of the officials talking about helmets. Ted Zawicki wearing his Cooper helmet there. Teddy Zawicki had a great first half. Very strong. It's these two guys, the great gate combination, that really have to step forward. That is the key of the game. It's that simple. For the turbos, if Paul and Gary don't step it up, talked to Paul, as I mentioned in the pregame. He didn't seem too concerned. He thought it was no big deal. And he said, oh, we're not, we're not favored to win this game? Well, guess what, guys? You're getting shellacked again. On the second half faceoff, Gary Gates fighting for it. And it's picked up by Jack Sebastian. Paul Gate will take it. Beltman back there on the defense. And it goes all the way back to Ted Sawicki. Referee blows the whistle to stop playing. Give it to Buffalo. Veltman will start the show. And here's the Hall of Famer, Kevin Alexander, who's been rather quiet this afternoon. Now, they're a man down, so it's five of the Purple Turbos against four of Buffalo's team. The danger here is that you overplay to try to get the ball. Right there, you try to double too much, and still there's enough green space that the team that's a man down can score. Ball loose in front of the crease, picked up by Gary Gate. Both teams at full strength now. I'll tell you what, Gary and Paul Gate want to score. They get fired up. The stuff getting fired up. They're just so cool and calm about everything. I don't think there's too many people that can stop them. Burnham with a stick checks against Gary Gate. Gate one on two, puts the shot. But Tavares blocks it on the outside. He's got a fast break opportunity against Pat Lee. Tavares taken down from behind by Lancey. And we'll see a two-minute penalty call there. Lancey had little choice but to make a desperate check on Tavares. Tavares got a beautiful outlet pass from Kilgore. Now here he is moving inside, makes a great juke move, and Lancey filling in for Terry Martinello makes the check at the last moment. Really about as clean as you can make as a desperation check. Now it'll make it four. Well, no, now the man from Buffalo is out of the box, so it's five one four, Craig. Power play opportunity with 13.47 to go in the third quarter. 9-7, the Bandits with the lead and the power play here. Here's Hamlet. 
He'll run the show from the outside. Shot by Keenan to the back of the net. Well, they worked the left side. They didn't deviate at all from that. They just kept it on the left side. They had some wiki looking there. The banded fans coming in from Buffalo. Here they are working that left side, left, left-handed left shooter side, back and forth. They didn't even take it across the cylinder. So the defense should have been sort of parked there. And look at Sawicki. He's a little bit to the left, probably a little bit tighter to the goal than he wants to be. He was getting ready for the ball to come low. You saw him move to the left. And when Keenan shot, Teddy was inked in left. He was anticipating, and that time it caught him. Well, Shirley chasing after the ball. Still doesn't have it in the net of his stick. As the ball is loose, Tavares flips it right in front of the net to Darius Kilgore. His shot saved by Sawicki. Tavares put his stick into the crease to pull the ball away from Sawicki, and a crease violation is called. Big save by Teddy Sawicki. Detroit now has to get some offense going. Buffalo has, has scored six power play goals. Four man up and two when they were shorthanded. This is Brian Nicola, the star of the second quarter. Trying to become the star of quarter number three. Gary with a save on the point blank shot by Adam Mueller. Well, two point blank saves by Gary. He has had a tremendous first half and starts right where he left off. Buffalo fans chanting Gary, much as they do back at the odd. Here is Jim Bissell. Hamley over to Paul Day, looking for the centering pass to Meridian. Forgoes that option, takes the shot with one on the shot clock. Sawicki pulls it in. Time got away from him. Seven or three goals down again. Not super critical for Detroit. They, of course, have to make some ground uh, against that deficit. But four down is where you really start getting nervous. Rodriguez to Hamilton. Stick checked away by Mark Burnham. Peter Park tried to flip it to Rodriguez. Pass off a little bit. Gary's outlet pass went too far. Fight for the ball along the board. Dan Pratt picks it up for the turbos, but loses it. Rodriguez will back it up to midfield. What a great play by Danny Pratt. He was one man against two. Park point black shot right to the sternum of Gary. Well, that's the kind of shot you've got to slam dunk. Peter Park couldn't have done it any better. Gary with a big save. Park takes another shot. The bouncer loose behind the crease. Gary is out of position. Paul Brock unable to capitalize. Rodriguez from the outside. Deflected wide by Gary. Dan Pratt comes away with it. Tried to put it in, but Gary was right there with the stick. How about Gary? Another three-save sequence. And he has been unbelievable. The shots are coming in on him, but just not enough to beat him. He's had a great day, just as good as the one here when they beat Detroit late in the season. 11 minutes to go, just under that point now. Third quarter. This is Hall. Hall looking for the shot. It goes high. Kevin Alexander trying to pick the ball up. Instead, he redirects it back to Tom Emick. 30-second violation called against the Bandits. Turbos with possession here. Kevin Alexander, 35 years old. Both knees wrapped up heavily. And that's the kind of shot. The pass was wide, and he gets nailed going for the loose ball. Coach doesn't want him getting his body out for those loose balls. Shot taken by Lancey. That one bounces around and comes back to Gary Gate. Gary Gate takes the shot away from the ball. Whistle. The illegal pick. The call. I'll make no bones about it. The success of the Detroit Turbos rests on the ability of the Gate brothers to get on track. One goal from the Gate brothers is not enough. Gary, 29 saves from 36 shots. Offensively, Keenan loses control of the ball. Counterattack. This is Brian Lemon for the Turbos. Lemon trying to wait for a trailer. Defensive effort there by Kevin Alexander. Good play trying to hit Lemon across the crease. Just high and wide. Another chance gone away from the Detroit Turbos offense. Craig, they had a fast break. Normally that's a slam dunk opportunity. This a low scoring game for both teams. Hiltz with a shot. 
deflects off the knee of Sawicki. That'll be a new 30-second clock when it's picked up by Geary. 10 to 7 the score. Buffalo Bandits trying to make their way into the championship game. Tavares trying to move in. Great check by Paul Gate. He releases right away for the fast break. Finneran deflected wide by Geary. Paul was on one side, Geary on the other, and Finneran got the ball. If it had gone to either of the Gate brothers, that could have been trouble. Mahar with a redirect to Tavares, who's played off the ball by Nicola. Mueller up to Paul Gate. Gate with a shot to score. That's who you want to have the ball on the fast break. Give it to either Paul or Gary, and when they are shooting right, tough to stop. Paul Gate now is back on the defensive end when he gets this ball, and then he's off to the races. Look, he's asking for it. He's hanging back a little bit. He's begging for the ball. They see him. He starts breaking ahead. He makes sure he's ahead, one step ahead of the defense, and he didn't take any time getting that shot off. Didn't have much to shoot for, but that's Gate accuracy. It's a two-goal game in Detroit on Prime Network. Leave, you said a negative thing about Paul Gaten. All of a sudden, here he is. Well, not necessarily negative. Buffalo's been successful, but these guys got to post. They got to show up. If Detroit's going to win, that's his first regular game goal. He scored the first goal of the game, but that was a power play. So Paul finally gets on track. Miles Shirley off the faceoff gets it to Nicola. Hurried over the bar by Geary. Same move, if you might remember in the first quarter, he scored twice on that very same move. Geary wasn't going to get burned three times. Brian's got to fake that move because Geary now is anticipating Brian dunking it behind him. So now Brian's got to go ahead and compensate and come out front. Off the line change, this is Paul Day running the show. Excuse me, Keenan. He takes the shot blocked on the outside. Point blank shot by Alexander, who's pushed into the crease, and a crease violation will still be called. Big save by Sawicki. Alexander is so accurate when he gets the ball down that close. Mueller moving in, takes the shot, and scores! Big time goal by Adam Mueller. Mueller, not known as a huge offensive star, but he has very credible skills. Give him the ball down in there, and he's dangerous. And this is what that proves on this shot, because he had the ball on a fast break. He looked to the cylinder. Adam gets it to your right, number 16. Look at him looking at the cylinder the whole way. That freezes the defense. Then at the last moment, he turns his attention to goalie Geary and finds his spot right over the right shoulder. Four goals this season for Mueller out of Michigan State. And almost every goal in this game, 10-9 to Buffalo leading, has been a fast break goal for both teams. A fast break goal or a power play goal. Very little set offense. Illegal procedure to call on the faceoff. We'll give the ball to the Buffalo Bandits. Paul Day will take it at the center circle. This is Bill O'Hanlon. O'Hanlon around the pick. O'Hanlon looking for an opening. Loses control of the ball. Hamley will set the pick to allow Meridian and O'Hanlon to get back to it. And who picks it up? Bob Hamley. There's Burnham over to Day. Meridian with a shot. Sawicki way out of the crease to save it. And Bob Hamley takes advantage of it by dumping it over the top of him. Now that hurts. That hurts. Sawicki just couldn't collect the ball. And Hamley very opportunistic. What a game he's having. Goal number three for Hamley. Let's watch it now. The biggest thing for goalie to do once he makes a save is get possession. Now, he is way out of the crease. Good move there. But he has to pull it back in to get safe. He doesn't get it. Now he's out of position. And that dump shot... Really, obviously, nothing on it, but he was out of position to do anything about it. So, Sawicki coming out to cut the angle. Very well done there. But once you don't get possession, you better recollect yourself and get back in position. Hamley learned that technique shoveling snow in Buffalo, I think. Just put it right over the top. Lancy almost got a stick on the ball, but Beltman with a nice steal. And the Bandits with a two-goal lead, 7-11 to go. Third quarter, Beltman loses control of the ball. Lemon has a chance for a fast break. He's got Lancey, dumps it over to him. Lancey out of position. He'll wait for the trailer. No, instead he goes to Lemon, and Lemon will set up the 
play for the Turbos. Kate with a shot, save Gary. And here's a counterattack opportunity now for the Bandits. Hall at midfield. You see Paul taking those shots from out front. Gary hardly getting any chances with the ball. Alexander point blank. Nice defense there by Brian Lemon redirecting the shot. Along the boards, Tavares comes away with it. Took the shot instead of giving it off to Alexander. Well, all this time, now the ball's lost again. Alexander with the steal on the pass. Out front for Tavares. Here is Brian Hall. Hall looking for a centering pass. Meanwhile, Gary Gate was waiting down by the goal for the fast break that never came. 15 on the 30. As Tavares will wait for a new man. There's your score by quarters. Pretty close. That second quarter run of five goals the deciding factor. Two quick shots by Jerry Hills. Neither one got by. Here comes Gary Gate for the turbos. Off the post. Gary very patient. Patient is one word. If you count on him for 70% of your goals, he's kind of ineffective. Gary Gates is a tremendous player. I was talking player. about Bill Gary as opposed to Gary oh, Gates. Gary, Gary, absolutely. I'm looking at Gary Gates, who was one of the greatest players to ever play the game. And he hasn't been a factor in this game. I really think it's a combination of fitness primarily. These guys are out of the game for three years now, collegially. It's up to them to get in shape, and it's just hard to do. Gary was married this year, and he's just finding a brand new routine that keeps him out of being in shape. Nikola shot deflected wide by Geary. Finner and the Mueller. Mueller had the last goal for the Turbos. Nikola right in front. Save Geary. Nikola tried to go low. Here's a counterattack opportunity now for the Buffalo Bandits. Paul Day will hold it up. Wait for the line change. Great play by Nikola. That was a good chance. He had those two goals in the first half, and since then he's been looking to shoot maybe more than he should, but that time he couldn't do it anymore perfectly. Good save by Geary. Hamley with a shot. And you heard it hit the glove of Sawicki. Turbo's down by two with 4.20 to go, third quarter. Here at the Joe Louis Arena. Armando Rodriguez. Hamilton at the wing. Peter Park. Looked like he was trying to get it to Rodriguez. Redirected there by Burnham defensively. And the 32nd clock will run out on Detroit. Peter Park's being frustrated because he's being covered so closely. And he's coming out to get the ball. He has been doing that all game. He is most effective down close. His back to the goal. Getting the ball. Pushing off the player with his body. And then wheeling and shooting. Brian Hall working against John Hamilton. Flips it over to Derek Keenan. Keenan moving in in front to Veltman, but it's knocked away. Peter Park comes away with it. The big man running the fast break. Rodriguez, the trailer, his shot deflected wide by Geary. Great dunk move by Rodriguez to get that shot off. And Geary again comes up huge in the goal for Buffalo. 20 on the shot clock as Paul Gate moves in. Very dangerous, but Geary able to get the knee pads in front of it. Well, he knows that they are baiting the near pipe and going back to the middle. Geary is right where he wants to be. All trying to get around Rodriguez. Does get to the front for Alexander, but Alexander played off the ball there. Lee in the crease to reel it in. Good defense on both ends of the field. Really, it has been a game of opportunity. It's either a power play or a fast break, and these offenses are clicking. Set situation, the defense takes over. Here's Paul Gate. Behind the net for Lee. Paul Gate with a point blank shot. Can't get it by Gary. Plus, a crease violation will turn the ball over. Well, you can't work the offense any better than that. A sensational job, and Gary again with just an unbelievable save. 11 to 9 the score. It's been a while since we've had a score, hasn't it? It's been about five minutes since the last score by Hamley, and that was an opportunistic one. Tavares against Lancey. Sawicki reels it in. Irrigate wide up. 
stopping. And what a beautiful defensive play by Bill Kerr diving for it. And now a lob pass to Bissell. That one is intercepted. I tell you why you know that Gary Gate is out of shape. He's hanging back to the goal almost constantly. When he is in shape, he generates the offense. He goes and gets the ball. He's being covered effectively by the defense, but he is way too often hanging back, inviting a lob pass. He's just playing out of condition. Burnham. Centering pass to the score. Bob Hamley. Fourth goal of the game by Hamley. He is the story for Buffalo. The big guns have been shot, shut down, but meanwhile, Hamley is having the game of his life. Ball comes all the way over. Sawicki has to go from the right pipe to the left pipe, and a redirection just beats the slide. Right there, bingo. Sawicki almost in time. 12-9. to 9, The Bandits in the lead. Will they be on their way to the championship? Could be. One twenty-five to go in the third quarter. Twelve to nine, the Buffalo Bandits with the lead in this divisional championship. Minute twenty-five is a big time here for them to get that goal. Detroit needs to come back within two. This is the pupil, Gary Gate, four-time All-American at Syracuse against Kevin Alexander in the Hall of Fame. Kevin Alexander coached Gary, taught him all the technique about facing off. The pupil comes out best here. There we go. Look at this. Two goals for the dynamic trio. Not nearly enough. Shooting 12%, you saw in 17 shots. John Hamilton. Shot taken by Dan Pratt to the back of the net. Well, you talked about an important goal before the end of the quarter. Dan Pratt gets it. The Gates are putting a lot of pressure on the rest of his team. Danny Pratt was an All-American defenseman at Syracuse. Here he takes a shot, just burns it past Geary. Well, they're getting great support from the other players, the roster players. Danny Pratt again just whistles it inside. You saw Gary raise his arm to try to deflect the shot. He's done it six or seven times today. This time it's deflected inside, right between the elbow and the uh, rib cage. Big time goal. Now they're within two. That's only the second time he's scored this season. Too much pressure being put on the roster, Craig. The Gate brothers got to come through. They're going to have to get loose and go ahead and generate offense. Here is Paul Gate. Moving in all alone. You can't stop Paul Gate when he gets an opening like that. And I really think it sounds too simple, but I really think it's because Paul's been married for two years. He, has a, <laughs> he, he knows the system. He knows how to go ahead and get himself in condition. Gary now comes over, sets the pick right there, down low for Brother Paul. Comes in, he's been looking for that backside all day. Finally, he gets it. Paul Gay, who has owned this league the last two years, tries to bring his team back into it. Major indoor lacrosse league world champions on the back of the Gate brothers. They've been riding for the last two years. Paul Gate now making his move with 41 seconds left in the third quarter. Hat trick for Paul Gate. That's a normal day of business for him. Illegal procedure. The call. We'll have a reface off as Veltman and Paul Gate both broke the restraining line. As Roy Conner, you see his wrists are taped. He broke both wrists in a major indoor lacrosse league game in New York, tripping and falling backwards, trying to bra brace his uh, fall. He cracked both wrists, and they've been wrapped for the last six weeks. That hurts just thinking about it. On the faceoff. Again, it's Gary Gate, the pupil, against Kevin Alexander. And on the loose ball, a trip by Pat Lee keeps Keenan from getting it. Tom Emick had caught up to the ball, but the whistle blows. Boy, tough call is right, because Emick did have the fast break going. So Wiki was glad he heard the whistles. Shot clock and the game clock are almost identical. Keenan working through. You know, something we haven't talked about that I noticed earlier on is that Detroit is playing a lot of zone, Craig. They've been in the zone since maybe the first quarter, really trying to just take away any of the high percentage shots for the great Buffalo offense. And the zone has been effective. Sawicki there, is, and by and large in subtle situations, has been protected. It's the fast break and power play. 
that has been the offensive opportunity for both teams. Here again, look, they're in a zone. Look at the three across for Detroit. They're playing it as the ball comes to them. They'll play it. See the zone stay up top? There's Gary, 22, waiting for the ball to come, and they knock down with good defense. A power play opportunity and a super power play coming up as another delayed penalty will be whistled here. Delay of game call by Roy Condon. And boy, the bench is steaming. They're right back in this game. Now 12 to 11, and they're going to almost hand Buffalo a goal. Lemons in the box. Vito Martello saying, come on, guys. I'm back here with one. It's a championship game. Look at the efficiency. Four out of five for Detroit. Four out of eight for Buffalo. Eight goals of the 23 scored on power plays. That doesn't count the two they scored on man down. Super power play opportunity here as Buff McCready looks on. Well, this is almost handing him a goal. You've got not enough time here, maybe, for one shot, possibly. And that'll do it for the quarter. A one-goal game here at the Joe Lewis Arena. Back with the fourth quarter on Prime Network. Take a look at the third quarter statistics. And total shots are now evened up. Shots on goal, again, fairly even. Faceoffs one, turbos there, gaining ground. You see Gary out there a lot in ground balls. Everything looking good for the turbos. They're not as accurate as they'd like to be, and they're giving up those easy, fast breaks to the Buffalo squad. It's a one-goal game as we begin the fourth quarter. Backcourt violation called against the Bandits. Don't forget, now they're down by two. Gary has to go against two players here. Detroit, two men short. And they've got a one-on-none fast break opportunity. Here comes Jim Beltman. Beltman, point blank, and a save by Sawicki. Loose ball picked up by Gary Gate. Gary has some open field. Gets it to Peter Park. Over to the far side, Paul Gate can control it, and this could be a one-on-none situation. This time it's Tavares. Tavares with a shot and a score. Now Peter Park absolutely killed his team with a terrible pass. Park had the ball. Gary Gate had done all the work. Swicky made the great save. The ball comes up to Park, and he throws it away. He bounces it off the boards. Watch this. Sloppy pass. Bounces it high off the boards. Here's Gary, Paul Gate trying to stall time. So Peter Park kills his team by throwing the ball away. Tavares now one-on-one. So Wiki had already made a big point-blank save. This time, he can't come up with it. And Peter Park, really, really big mistake there. Tavares with two goals today. And Detroit not out of trouble yet. Still a power play situation for the Bandits for the next 1-11. This is Derek Keenan. Hamley up top. And a rocket shot by Darius Kilgore to the back of the net. Well, penalties I thought might hurt Buffalo because they lead the league in penalties. But it has ended up that the penalties are killing the turbos. Kilgore's got a tremendous shot from the outside. He just cranks it up. And not much help for Teddy Sawicki. Now he starts, look, looking down. He was really out of position on that. Ted Swiggy could be getting tired. Tough call by Mito Martinello. Here's your first team All-Pro. The Fulham in the championship game. He is getting tired. He's played a great game, but he's losing fluids and getting a little bit tired. Lyle Shirley wins the faceoff, and Spinnerin will come away with it. Here's Nicola. Turbo's down by three. Nicola loses control of the ball. Fast break opportunity. Here's Tavares, right side. Centering pass, shot taken to the back of the net. Bill Mahar, who scored only one goal during the regular season. Well, Sawicki is mad at himself, but he shouldn't be because he's getting absolutely zero help from his team. Now, Brian Nicola had the two goals in the first half. 
The problem is he hasn't stopped trying to shoot. Here he is coming up, trailing the play, just waving his stick on defense. That ain't good enough because that shot beats Sawicki. You've got to help your goalie out a little more than this. If Ryan comes in and makes a check, they take away the shot. He doesn't do it. This ball goes by Teddy Sawicki for goal 15. Three goals in less than a minute and a half. Could make the difference in the long run. 15-11, Bandits on Prime Network. Apparently, it might have been coming out of the penalty box too early, which is kind of tough. Six forty six to go in the ball game, sixteen to thirteen. The Buffalo Bandits have been pretty successful in getting it by Ted Sawicki. Well Sawicki has had oh my gosh, what a shot by Alexander. Sawicki made three Hall of Fame saves before that one. His team is just putting too much pressure on him. That time Alexander comes across the crease. He comes from behind the defense. The defense has their backs turned to this man. Alexander splits the scene, gets the ball, and then over his shoulder, watch this. The defense is not looking at Alexander. He comes to the backside and then shoots around his shoulder. So, Wiki, no way you can defend that shot. It is tremendously accurate, as you can see. The great one, Alexander, puts it right in the corner. We had a couple of weeks off before this game, and I went home trying to do that all week and couldn't get one behind my back. He does it for a living. And that stick he has is about as wide as the ball is. Just catching it's a real tribute. Paul Gate trying to come away with it. And who did come away with it? Kevin Finneran. Over to Paul Gate. Moving in. Trying to get a shot. Gets a shot away. Geary with a save. Loose ball picked up by Veltman. The vacuum cleaner, he does so much for his team by leading the league in ground balls. He gives the team control of the ball, like right here in this pressure situation. He's a leader in the league, 111 on the season. Tavares is second with 66, and then Lacasio from New York comes up with 65. But he's a goalie, and I don't count him. I only count field players, which means Souls next at 57. Beltman tried to move in, delayed penalty coming up. Well, you've had an awful lot of penalties this a, afternoon. A ton of penalties, and a lot of offense for the penalties. At least eight goals scored by, was it nine now? The next one by Buffalo on a power play. Look at this, the tackle job. <laughs> Once you get the offhand around the player, it's up to the referees to decide if you are really impeding the offense. Having the offhand or wrapping the player in and itself is not a penalty unless you really alter the offensive player's move to the goal. Bandits on the power play with 547 to go in the ballgame. Keenan out front, deflected wide by Sawicki. It was number seven out of nine tries. That is unbelievable. It's got to be a major indoor lacrosse league record for efficiency. And that doesn't show, Craig, the two goals they scored man down. So they've got nine of their 17 goals in uneven situations. Emily behind the back to Keenan. Keenan loses control of the ball in front of the net. Pratt comes away with it, looking for the outlet pass, takes it to Pat Lee. Pat Lee over to Peter Park, who can't get his stick on the ball. Peter Park against Tavares, and Tavares with a nice stick check. Loops it forward. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Keenan, goal number 18. And Buffalo just about ices it on that one with less than five minutes to go. Most of the goals that I've talked about have been fast breaks or power plays. And here, the unsettled situation, Teddy Sawicki facing yet another one-on-one. -on -one, and Keenan, with a great accuracy, puts it away. He checks to see where the defense is. He knows he's all alone. One-on-one. -on -one. He'll commit the goalie and then just find the spot. You don't have to make the goalie move very much if you see a target. Keenan saw his target. Three goals today. And the leading offensive player on Buffalo's squad comes up with a hat trick. Timeout called by the Detroit Turbos. 4.58 to go. This is all there is for them, Craig. They've got to do it starting right now.
return, but Buffalo took every opportunity Detroit gave them. Don't forget, Detroit led 4-3 to three in the first quarter. In the second quarter, it was five straight goals by the team from Buffalo. Vito Martinello is all down to this. He's talking to Gates. Plus Paul right there on the, on the bench asking for whatever they've got left in the last five minutes. New goalie in for Detroit, Mike Samut, is giving Ted Sawicki a rest. Ted Sawicki playing a very good game, but of course it takes a lot of energy out there losing all that water. And here's Gary Gate off the aggressive play by the Turbos, but the stick check knocks it away. Score by quarters. Buffalo again. You just can't relax on them. They always start a little bit slow, but look at the symmetry. 3 6 3 6. And That's a tennis score, score quarter. Isn't it? <laughs> it looks like a tennis score. Here's Beltman going in. His shot goes wide. 4 17 to go. All dumped into the corner where Beltman picks it up. His shot just before the end of the 30 second period. Turbos will have it at midfield. It's going to be all. It's going to be all offense. Here's Paul Gate. That's who Vito was talking to. He's saying, "Give me a goal, buddy." He tried. Ball loose in the corner. Nicola going after it. Keenan almost came away with it. It's still loose. And Peter Park hits it over to Martinello. Park tried to get it to Paul Gate. Gary was out of position, but Paul Gate couldn't put a stick on it. And Park had the shot. The right-hander coming down from the goalie's right, which means he's shooting from right in the cylinder. He elected to go for a, high, a low percentage feed. I mean, a great play if you can make it. But, boy, with the lack of shooting and chances they've had, what an opportunity lost. While Shirley loops it to midfield, Mahar pulls in the loose ball. Here's Kerr. And with three minutes to go, the 13 Detroit goals, their lowest total, tying a couple of games in 1992. Here's Hilt, stick checked away by Martinella. Lyle Shirley, who's seen limited action this year, trying to make a contribution here in the playoffs. Nice pass to Paul Gates to the back of the net. Don't tell the turbos this one's over. Of the last seven goals, five have been from either Paul Gate or Peter Park. Paul Gate is doing everything he can to stay in this game. He's not getting the help when he needs it. The shot coming there beautifully in the corner. Goal 14. Unfortunately, not enough time left. 2.40 left. Four goals today. A nice day's work for Paul Gate. But where are Gary's numbers? No goals for Gary Gate. And that's the story for the Detroit Turbos. On the face-off, illegal procedure as Beltman kicks the ball. You're not supposed to do that. Turbos with the ball, shot by Gary Gate with 2.30 to go. Four goals the lead by the Bandits. Mueller shot hits the top by Gary Gate, takes the shot, saved by Gary. Tough play there by Bill Gary. Alexander racked into the boards. Well, again, I'm just going to say one more time, Gary Gate has all the respect in the world for me. He's the greatest, one of the greatest players ever to play the game, no question about it. But I think he's a little out of condition. He's had the ball several times here where he could take it right into the cylinder and do what he does like nobody else. But he's just, I think, too tired to do it. 30-second clock runs out as the fan gets a souvenir. Lacrosse's version of the four corners in effect there. And the Turbos are pulling their goalkeeper. Ball loose in front, Peter Park going after it, holding the call. Turbos will have it with 1.43 to go, down by four. And Rodriguez with a score off the restart. It's a three-goal game with 1.40 to go. Uh, 
They're not giving up, obviously. No team does. Peter Park moving the ball out. Rodriguez comes right across the crease and gets Geary moving from right to left and just hits the open spot. We've seen both teams take advantage of that movement across the crease. Armando Rodriguez. Now you'll remember that the Buffalo Bandits started this quarter with three goals within a minute and a half. We've got 140 to go. Key possession as Day comes away with it off the faceoff, and they will spread the offense. Locked down to 120. This is him. You've got to gamble. They've got to come out and force possession. They've got to go ahead and try to get it, even if they get called for the penalty. No time left. Hamley goes in, takes a shot with four on the shot clock. That resets the shot clock. And Lee pulls it in to Samut. And Samut will bring it up the field. Gets it up to Paul Gate. Paul Gate has got to do it here. And he does! It's a two-goal game with 54.6 on the clock. Well, Paul Gates coming on strong. You know, I had this game at about 18-16, and it's right about there. Of course, I was thinking that maybe Detroit would have some sort of home field advantage. They haven't, but that's about the low level goal-wise that we're seeing today. Paul Gates coming out of the box, Craig. He sits on the back end of the box, waits for possession, and then he comes in and gets the feed. Tremendous velocity when he gets possession. And what kind of accuracy? Five goals, Paul Gate doing everything he can to keep in this game. Look at the numbers for Gary Gate. Unfortunately, focusing on him only because he is such a sensational player. If Gary scores at all, Detroit wins this game. 49 seconds to go. It's a two-goal game here at the Joe Louis Arena. Nicola looking for the shot, takes it. It goes high. Peter Park is there. His shot stopped by Gary. The Bandits come away with it. Beltman picking it up. The loose ball. Who's got it? Whistle blows. Well, there was no whistle. Roy kind of was confused. He didn't even blow the whistle. Now back to Detroit. Here's Martinello in front. Nicola with a shot. That might have hit Harris Kilgore in the side of the head. Nicola out front. Gary pulls it in with 20 seconds to go. He's going to try to hold on to it, but the turbo player is tenacious on the defense. 14 seconds to go. And Gary Buffalo Bandits have marched themselves after being down 0-3 at the beginning of the season. They have won seven straight. Ted Zawicki gave it all he could. Too many power plays looking him straight in the face. Too many fast breaks. The Bandits will head into the championship game looking to create history in the major indoor lacrosse league by winning the championship in their inaugural season. Last goal in a fast break against Samut. Samut seeing a little bit of what Teddy Zawicki saw for the entire first three quarters. The bench erupts. This is it. They're on the way to the championship game against the winner of the American division being decided right now. The Bandits will host that game, I believe, but we will bring you all the details when we return on Prime Network. The Bandits, the national division playoff champion. Game of the Week has been brought to you by Coors Light. It's the right beer now. By U.S. Air. U.S. Air begins with you. By Reebok. Life is short. Play hard. By STX Lacrosse Equipment. And by GMC Truck. The strength of experience. And usually when we talk about the GMC Truck play of the game, we're talking offense, not this time. Well, Greg, this is an early test on Gary by Gary Gate. Gary Gate trying to be an impact player offensively. 
Geary makes the sensational save on that 100-mile-an-hour shot, then follows it up with another save. He collects the ball, pirouettes, and gets ready for the outlet. That was critical early on in the game and showed the success they would have throughout. The Detroit Turbos made a late rally trying to test Bill Geary, but not quite enough. Well, they gave him the big test late. Paul Gate came in. He did his part, and uh, Peter Park threw in a couple. But it was Gary Gate who really didn't come to play today, and that hurt Detroit. Look at the stats. The big story, total shot, 83 for the Turbos, 61 for the Bandits. And then below that, look at shots on goals, 60 to 48. It shows you that the Bandits were shooting more accurately. It's a problem that Detroit has had late in the season here. Normally very, very accurate but they have not been getting good efficiency shooting-wise. It cost them today. The Buffalo Bandits have earned a shot at the championship, but they have to travel to the Spectrum in Philadelphia for the first time in their history. The Bandits against the Wings, and here's where you can see it on Prime Network from coast to coast. Prime ticket out on the West Coast. Pass in the Great Lakes region, MSG in the New York, New England area, and in the Southwest on Home Sports Entertainment. Four. Lee Belsmo, this is Craig Johnson. The Buffalo Bandits are on their way to the championship game as they go after the North American Cup against the Philadelphia Wings. We'll see you from the spectrum.